we close the series of self-paced videos for Module 3, Developing an Entrepreneurial Mindset, with preparing to use failure as a valuable learning experience. In the context of the castle, as guiding metaphor, we can say that failure is like the drawbridge gate that can be raised or lowered to allow or prevent passage for people, carriages, goods, and animals. It symbolizes the threshold between taking action and encountering potential challenges or setbacks. Connecting the castle to the outside world and inviting people to extend themselves beyond their comfort zones in order to engage in problem-solving opportunities and pursue their goals. Let's lower that bridge and see what happens next. Who feels invited to join us? In this final video of Module 3, we're going to cover failure, the drawbridge connecting the castle with the outside world through times of uncertainty and danger, but also through times of abundance and prosperity, being lowered again and again by trusting that something good will come out of it, even when the castle is under attack at that very gate. We'll start with what is failure and how to find room for it, switching to a mental exercise of practicing the failure autopsy approach to embrace continuous learning. Then we'll be moving forward towards how to reduce fear of failing. Next, we'll be covering what to be aware of when it comes to failure, and close with an invitation to practice the alternate universe exercise to better understand how to tackle situations of this sort. Would you like to cross the bridge and see how it works best? I'm going to tell you a little joke. A man comes to a conference and tries to check in at the hotel he previously booked. The concierge tells him that because of too many guests and overbookings, he doesn't have any room available anymore, but that he can leave his name and they will call him if a room becomes available soon. He says, my name is Improvement and there is always room for improvement, right? What we want to tell you with this is that there is always room for failure too. And if this is not the default, then you should make room for it. Imagine how it would have played out across history if every time a castle was conquered, it would have never lowered its drawbridge gate again, keeping itself safe from future invaders, but also slowly dying on the inside, never again connected with the outer world. So let's see how we define failure. This may be the hardest concept so far to wrap your thoughts around it in terms of accepting it and making room for it in your life. But if you look failure as success in progress, like Einstein said, then failure is not a permanent defeat, but rather a stepping stone toward eventual success. It is just a natural part of the journey towards achieving your goals. You can also look at failure like finding 10,000 ways that don't work, like Edison said, emphasizing his resilience and determination in the face of repeated failures while inventing the light bulb. From this perspective, each attempt, even if unsuccessful, contributed to the understanding and progress toward finding the ultimate solution. Michael Jordan also referred to failure by saying, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeeded. He underlines the idea that failure and perseverance are integral to achieving success, emphasizing that willingness to face failure and keep trying, it is what ultimately leads to growth and accomplishment. J.K. Rowling stated that it is impossible to live without failing at something unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you have failed by default. By this, she highlights the inevitability of failure in the pursuit of meaningful experiences and goals, encouraging to embrace failure as a natural part of life. If we look at the way Dennis Waitley speaks about failure, then we understand that it should be our teacher, not our undertaker, that it is delay, not defeat. It is a temporary detour, not a dead end street. This way, failure becomes a valuable source of learning and growth or a temporary setback rather than a permanent obstacle, emphasizing the importance of resilience and continuous effort. There is a strong correlation between failure and continuous learning, which lies in the concept of growth and development. Failure serves as a powerful teacher, offering valuable lessons and insights that contribute to continuous learning. 
when individuals encounter failure, they are presented with an opportunity to examine what went wrong, understand the factors that led to the failure, and identify areas for improvement. In essence, failure becomes a catalyst for continuous learning by prompting individuals to reflect, adapt, innovate, and build resilience. So how can you shift from experiencing failure to embracing it as part of your continuous learning journey? For this, we propose to you action number four, embrace continuous learning with failure autopsy exercise. You don't need to grab that pen and paper to write down the answers because you can take it as food for thought and follow each step thoroughly in your working journal. Because it is not easy to become comfortable with failure, we want to share with you this exercise called Failure Autopsy, which you can practice by yourself or in groups when it comes to extracting learnings from moments of unmet goals. It's like playing with the mechanism which lowers or raises the drawbridge at the castle entrance. If you want to work on it in a group, first you must set the stage by explaining the shift in perspective from failure to learning opportunity. If you are doing it by yourself, write this down as a mantra. I want to learn something out of it. You begin by selecting and defining a failure. Choose wisely. Don't go for the first or for the easiest to accept. Look at a personal or professional setback that really had an impact. It could be a project that didn't go as planned, a missed opportunity, or any situation where the desired outcome wasn't achieved. When moving to define it, describe the failure itself, including what you had hoped to achieve, what went wrong, and the impact it had. Then work towards analyzing the failure. Do a root cause analysis, looking at contributing factors. Identify key decisions made through the process, understand the rationale behind them and how they impacted the outcome. Discuss also what worked well, which were the benefits despite the failure. Next step is to extract the proper lessons. For this, you need to identify mistakes, errors, or missed steps with clear eyes, and extract key takeaways and insights from this. Another difficult part of the exercise is the part where you are invited to reflect and apply growth mindset. See how the shift in perspective actually helped you look at the failure as a learning opportunity and how this contributed to your personal growth. Then try to think how you can apply now this newfound knowledge to improve decision making, to prevent similar mistakes or approach challenges differently. If you are working in a group, then it is the right time to share the outcomes with the group because it encourages collective learning. If you are doing it by yourself, we encourage you to share your insights with a partner, a friend, a family member or someone close to you. Maybe they will learn something from it as well. These are six simple steps you can take to ensure you embrace continuous learning when faced with failure. Are you ready now to use this leverage on the drawbridge gate of the castle? It's important to realize that in everything we do, there's always a chance that we'll fail. Facing that chance and embracing it, it's not only courageous, it also gives us a fuller, more rewarding life. There are, however, a couple of ways to reduce the fear of failing. Let's check them out. Did you know that fear of failure is not only common to most human beings, but also has its own name? It is called atychophobia and is a type of anxiety disorder where individuals experience significant distress and anxiety related to the possibility of failing or making mistakes. This fear can be pervasive and impact various aspects of a person's life, leading to avoidance behaviors and hindering their ability to pursue opportunities and achieve their goals. We propose to you four simple actions you can take separately, combined, or altogether to help reduce this fear of failing. Decision tree, positive thinking, worst case scenario, and contingency plan. Fear of failure can come from fear of the unknown, so what better way to fight it than analyzing all potential outcomes? You can even use decision trees to visually map possible outcomes. If you don't know what those are, stay tuned for our residential weekend. We might just cover it there. You can also learn to think more positively, counter-arguing self-sabotage with building self-confidence. We have already showed you two techniques that you can use. 
the work by Katie Byron, and A, B, C, D, E of Emotions by Dr. Albert Ellis. I remember a nice drawing that visually showed that our real problems are a fraction of an entire circle called what we think our problems are. And this got me thinking to why we do this, why we imagine worst case scenarios and think they are genuinely disastrous, and we do it on a regular basis. Yes, there are situations when this is the case, but what about the majority of the situations? If we closely look at the worst case scenario, we might just see that it is actually not that bad and recognize what is holding us back in fact. Allow yourself to fully explore this scenario by asking yourself continuously, so what, until you feel you have exhausted what you needed to know. Also, if there is something in particular which feels extra important or generates higher amounts of fear of failure, maybe this is a good candidate for a plan B approach. This can help you feel more confident about moving forward and give you that extra willingness to try things out. How do you feel now about the drawbridge gate? Would you rather lower it so you can step outside the comfort zone or keep it up so no one can cross the bridge? Here are some ideas on what to consider when it comes to failure. Failure can teach us things about ourselves that we would have never learned otherwise. For instance, failure can help you discover how strong a person you are. Failing at something can help you discover your truest friends or help you find unexpected motivation to succeed. Often, valuable insights come only after a failure. Accepting and learning from those insights is key to succeeding in life. The wonderful thing about failure is that it's entirely up to us to decide how to look at it. There is no universal definition of what failure is, not even when there are metrics and fixed milestones which are breached. You can then choose to see failure as the end of the world or as proof of just how inadequate you are. Or you can look at failure as the incredible learning experience that it often is. We often think that if we didn't do something perfectly, then we failed at it. The funny thing is, perfection, just as failure, is something you defined for yourself and by yourself. So how you evaluate yourself dictates how you face failure and how you see success. Most, if not all the times, success is more about progress than about anything else, not about perfection because there is none. If you ever did a puzzle, you know that very rarely you know where all pieces go from the beginning. You may know which ones form the frame, which ones are in the upper or lower part, which ones form a tree or a flower or a car, but for some pieces, you have no clue in the world where they fit and why they are there on your table. It's the same with failure. If you choose to see it as a piece of the puzzle, you will soon find out what it is good for and how it fits the big picture. Just believe it. When you embrace failure as a chance to cultivate resilience, you bounce back stronger and navigate easier the unpredictable currents of life. Each setback becomes an opportunity to forge inner strength and develop the tenacity needed to overcome future challenges with unwavering determination, the same way you forge that steel gateway to the castle. Then it is up to you how you further use it. How do you feel now after all this lowering and raising of the drawbridge and the castle gateway? Ready for more action? Playing and replaying a specific failure in our head is something that we all do. Up until now, maybe you thought this is a waste of time, but there is a way you can spin it around to make it an utmost productive activity. This is why we propose to you action number five, practice alternate universe as a creative technique to overcome failures by learning from them. You don't need to grab that pen and paper to write down the answers. Once more, you can take it as food for thought and follow each step in your own time in your working journal. How to practice the alternate universe exercise, promoting critical thinking, self-awareness and the growth mindset. Begin by identifying a specific failure or challenging situation that you have experienced and are open to exploring. Ensure that the failure is something you are comfortable revisiting and analyzing. 
then set the context, provide a brief overview of the failure, outlining the key decisions, actions, and circumstances that led to the outcome. This will help you to make sure you have a clear understanding of the situation. Next, imagine alternate universes. Imagine different choices, decisions, or actions you could have taken at critical points in the situation. Feel free to craft creative alternates, even if they seem unconventional. Move towards visualizing outcomes. For each alternate universe, try to visualize the potential outcomes that could have resulted from those choices. Look at how each alternate might have affected the eventual result. Then you should process the insights you have gained. Reflect on what you've learned about your decision-making process, the impact of different choices, and the factors that contributed to the failure. Finally, identify the key takeaways, concluding with lessons learned from reimagining the situation. You can also take it one step further and create an action plan based on the lessons learned, outlining specific strategies, behaviors, or approaches you wish to implement in future situations. As mentioned before, you can find this exercise also in your working journal and use it from there. We close this video and module 3 by saying failure is the condiment that gives success its flavor. This quote by Truman Capote suggests that failure is an integral part of the journey towards success. Just as a condiment adds flavor to a dish, failure adds depth and richness to the experience of achieving success. It implies that overcoming failure and learning from mistakes enhance the value and satisfaction of eventual accomplishments. In essence, failure is not to be feared or avoided, but rather embraced as a valuable seasoning that enhances the overall taste of achievement. We're waiting for you in our next video, starting Module 4, where we will be covering how to establish supportive networks and communities.